The NFL playoffs start tomorrow with the wild card round, and really, are we real sports fans if we don't have some hot takes about the playoffs that are about to begin? I think not. So today, Adam Record and I will give you our six most controversial opinions about the NFL playoffs. Um, I'll start first. My controversial opinion, the Tennessee Titans are going to win the Super Bowl. Now, if you didn't see our last video talking about previewing the NFL playoffs, um, I talked about the Titans as being my, my dark horse pick to win. And it's because they match up so well against the teams that they will potentially have to face as they move through the rest of the AFC. Their rushing attack is so good that they can keep high-powered offensive teams like the Chiefs, like the Bills, off the field, camouflage the fact that the Titans' pass defense is really bad this year. They can camouflage that fact, and so it really comes down to can they get first downs, which the answer is yes, they can. Can they score touchdowns in the red zone? Against Again, the answer is yes. And can they force just one or two turnovers to derail the momentum of a hot offensive team? And again, I think the answer to that is yes. They've been able to do it all season. They're seventh in the league in turnover percentage. I think that all of that means that the Titans, despite not being the most complete team in the NFL, maybe not the most talented team in the NFL, they certainly have the most talented running back in the NFL in Derrick Henry. And so I think that going forward, every game the Titans play, they're a good matchup. They can beat the Chiefs. They can beat the Bills. They can beat the Steelers if the Steelers do happen to go. They can beat the Ravens. And so that means that the Titans find their way into the Super Bowl. And once you're there, all bets are off. Derrick Henry can go off about 300 yards in the Super Bowl. He'll win Super Bowl MVP. He has, a, <laughs> there's, there's a shout for Derrick Henry to be the MVP of the league. And the Tennessee Titans are going to hoist the Lombardi Trophy in February. Hey, that's all, that's all great and sounds like a hot take to me. Uh, my <laughs> hot take, my first one here, <laughs> is going to be the Washington football team gets a playoff win. You heard it here first. Okay. Folks. You heard it here first. Tom Brady, as good as he is, as much as he's revitalized this Tampa Bay Buccaneers team, you know, I don't know if he can handle what the front seven of Washington football team is, mm -hmm. you know? I think, you, you know, you love you love the little underdog story. You love Ron Rivera, Alex Smith coming back, you know? Yep. That yep. should honestly be, you know, comeback coach of the year and player of the year right there. Those two awards are yeah. already going to the Washington Washington. Washington football team. Why don't we give them one more and give them a playoff win, you know? Okay. Just saying. It's the okay. nighttime game on Saturday. Anything can happen. Okay. All right. All right. I can get down with that. I think a lot of people have been calling for the uh, the Comeback Player of the Year award to just be renamed the Alex Smith Comeback Player of the Year. And I got no problem with that. I mean, this is a guy who almost I don't either. could potentially have lost his life to that injury that he sustained a couple years ago. And uh, yet here he is quarterbacking a team in the playoffs. I think it's a fantastic story. Okay, I'm going to go for my second one here. And my second hot take of the day here is the Pittsburgh Steelers are massively overrated. And they are going to get absolutely slaughtered by the Cleveland Browns. And I say this not because Whoa. I like the Cleveland Browns. Because I, I actually don't think that the Browns are that great themselves. I think the Steelers, they played a stretch of games. The reason their record is so good is they played a stretch of games that where, where they played really bad teams, and even then they almost lost to most of them. I mean, when you look at their early, when you look at their early schedule, they play the Giants, the Broncos, the Texans, the Eagles, the the Browns, Titans, Ravens, Cowboys. Now, two maybe three wins in there that you would say those are against solid teams. Their best scoreline of the year is beating the Browns 38-7. to That was really solid. Beat the Titans by three, beat the Ravens by four, then they go, they beat the Cowboys by five. That's after beating the Broncos by five, the Texans by seven. Like, these, are, we're talking one possession games against teams that aren't very good. And then when you play actual playoff teams, they lost, they lost to the Washington football team. They lost to the Buffalo Bills. They go on and lose to the Bengals. They lost in the last game of the year to the Browns. This is not a team that anyone should have, should have any confidence in. And when it comes to the Steelers, what do they do well? 
That's my question. They're the worst rushing team in the league, first off, so they don't run the ball very well. In terms of passing offense, they're 15th in the league, so they don't pass the ball particularly well. In terms of rushing defense, they don't defend the run particularly well. They're 11th in the league. So the only thing they do well at this point is pass defense and I guess forcing turnovers. They're sixth in the league. But you're playing the Cleveland Browns. The Browns are a team that does not rely on their ability to throw the ball. I mean, that's that's we know that to be true because Baker Mayfield, frankly, can't be trusted to throw the ball a whole lot. So the Browns are a team that is a lot more balanced in their offensive approach and the Steelers just aren't equipped to, to deal with that, in my opinion. So the Steelers have been overrated all season because they went through a stretch of games against really bad teams. And even then, they almost lost a lot of those. And so now when they face a good team in the Browns, again, a team I don't think is particularly good, but they're here, they're in the playoffs. They face a team like the Browns who have began to really figure themselves out, um, a team that doesn't rely on their passing game which is the only thing the Steelers can do well and so I just think I think the Steelers are coming there the Steelers sorry are coming in with an old quarterback in Ben Roethlisberger they're coming in with a rushing attack that can't make up for the fact that Ben Roethlisberger is on his last legs and nothing is looking good right now for the Steelers they're not playing well um, they've lost what they've lost four of their last five games I mean just nothing is is going Pittsburgh's way right now and I just I don't think they're a team that's built to win in the playoffs I don't think they're a team that's going to win in the playoffs and uh, I think if you've got your money on the Steelers right now um, take it off you got a day they're playing the, they're playing the final they're playing the final game on Sunday Steelers Browns they're playing the nightcap on Sunday take your money off of the Steelers right now because uh, that's it's not going to go well it's really not based on everything the Steelers have shown us yeah, and uh, I would take that money off the Steelers and I would put it on a number seven seed to win a playoff game this weekend. Ooh. First time in NFL history. You heard it here first. <laughs> All right, well, which I one is it? Hey, either number 17, split the money. Oh, split either money number seven. Team. Okay. Either number seven. I think, I think both have the potential to win. Um, a game this weekend. Playoffs are wacky. We love the playoffs. It's such an American thing. Um, it would be it would be so unfitting to the year that we've had to not have a number seven team win in a playoff game. I think the Colts have found true form. Okay. With Philip Rivers and the emergence of Jonathan Taylor, as good as the Bills' defense is, um, I, I just I could I could see the Colts. I could see the Colts just coming out of nowhere and. And kind of, you know, giving it to the Bills a little bit here. Okay. At the okay. same time, I could see the same with Chicago Bears. And that eight and eight record, I think, is a bit is a bit foolish, you know. Mm -hmm. They're they're a team that started the year five and one, and they went through a little bit of a rough patch. Yeah. Losing to a ton of NFC teams. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Specifically a ton of playoff NFC teams. Yeah, no, that's definitely but, true. But they have won reversal of your of your Steelers losing four of the last five. The Bears have won three of their last four, only losing to the number one seed Packers. Mm -hmm. But the Bears looked very good and they looked very under control. David Montgomery has come out of nowhere. True. You know, the defense has looked phenomenal. Yep. Giving up you know, not not many points in their last or in that three out four win. Even when they were losing, mm -hmm. I think during that losing stretch, I don't think they gave up more in the first three games of it at least. Or first four of them actually I'm looking at right now, they didn't give up more than twenty six points. Okay. Which okay. is pretty pretty solid to an average defense giving up in the NFL. Whereas two games they gave up forty one and thirty four. I'm just saying Bears could be a sleeper pick here, you know? Okay. All right. All right. Could be a sleeper pick. I'd lean to Indianapolis beating Buffalo, just given how talented Indian, talented Indianapolis is. Yeah. And um, teams that have given the Bills troubles were Titans, Chiefs, and Cardinals. Those were their three okay. losses. Okay. And I think with that, yeah, I think with that, it was more of, um, you know, Titans run heavy, mm -hmm. Cardinals 
run heavy per se. Chiefs not so much run heavy, but teams that have given the Bills a little bit run for their money have been a little bit more run heavy teams. Gotcha. So, all right, all right. I don't know. I'm saying number seven I, seed, first time ever this I'm not, weekend. <laughs> I'm, I'm, not di- I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm not disagreeing with you here. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, we both have one more, uh, so I will go for mine. The MVP, I don't, I, I don't think the playoff performance has much bearing on, if any, on who the MVP really is. But I do think that for people like us who question everything that happens after it happens, I mean that's that's pretty much what we do as sports fans. There is one player that's going to give us a lot of cause to question who the MVP is, and that guy is going to prove it throughout the course of the playoffs. And that man is Jamal Adams from the Seattle Seahawks. I think Jamal Adams is going to prove that if there is any defensive player who's going to win the MVP award, it should be him. And here's the reason why. What, when you talk about MVP, you're not talking about necessarily the best player. You're talking about the most valuable player. Meaning if you were to take him away from the team, how much would that change the complexion of that football team? And when you take Jamal Adams away from the Seahawks, that is a completely different football team. And let me tell you why. Adams did not play for basically the first, a, a little bit, I would say almost first half of the season, all right? The Seahawks against teams gave up 25 points, 30 points, 31, 23, 26, 37, and 27, all right? When Jamal Adams comes back and and the Seahawks start figuring out who they are. Oh, and by the way, they gave up 44 to the Bills. When Jamal Adams comes back and the Seahawks start figuring out who they are on defense, here's what they give up. Starting from their win over the Cardinals back back in November. Here's what they gave up. 21, 17, 17, 3, 15, 9, 23. Jamal Adams is almost the entire reason. Jamal Adams and Carlos Dunlap are the two guys that made that difference. Jamal Adams comes back and suddenly the defense goes from a record-setting pace. They were on a record-setting pace for being the worst pass defense in the history of the league to now they're not even the worst pass defense in the league this year. That's the kind of impact that Jamal Adams can have on a defensive unit. And I think throughout the playoffs, he is going to show why he should be at least considered an MVP candidate this year. He gets onto a team, the Seahawks go from a sorry excuse for a defensive unit to suddenly they win what? Uh, Six out of their last seven? And they never give up more than 23 points in any of those games? That's the kind of impact that Jamal Adams can have on a defensive unit. He seems to be healthy, he's playing well, and he's gonna show everyone why if there were ever a defensive player that was going to win an MVP award, it should be Jamal Adams the way that he's playing right now. And he's going to help lead the Seahawks at least to an NFC championship, if not a Super Bowl berth. It's a wild take there, and we'll see We'll see if that <laughs> happens. <laughs> here's, here's my last take. Um, not really player-based, but more team-based again. Mm-hmm. Um, fun fact, all seven NFC playoff teams have won at least one Super Bowl. Huh. Another fun fact, three of the seven AFC playoff teams have not, including Cleveland, or which are Cleveland, Tennessee, and Buffalo. My hot take is a team that has not won a Super Bowl will win. So it's going to be one of those three AFC teams, in my opinion. Okay. Okay. Let's just cap off the absolutely crazy year that we've had with having Cleveland, who hasn't been to the postseason in, what, 31 years? winning the Super Bowl. You know, Bill's Mafia jumping off Tampa Bay Stadium onto these plastic cardboard tables when they when they win, you know. Or keeping the Patriot t- tradition alive and having Mike Vrabel win a Super Bowl, you know, as a head coach. We'll see. We'll see. That's my hot take. Oh man, that would be I can, now now <laughs> now I need to see Bills Mafia just jumping off a, like a, a a forty story building onto a table. <laughs> I need that in my life now. Maybe some cushioning below, but you know, as hardcore <laughs> fans as they are, I don't think they need it. Yeah, who needs cushioning? Cool. You'll you'll take you'll take an <laughs> elbow straight to the concrete, like their oh arms dangling. God. They're like, all right, it's fine. Bills won the Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh man, won't have legs and they'll be fine. But no, yeah, that's I, I'm telling you. I, I mean, I mean that out of total respect. By the way, I, I love the Bills Mafia. That that's a real fan base right there. It is absolutely real fans, passionate. Through, I mean, they they stand in snow half the year. So. Oh yeah, they, they at least give at least give them a Super Bowl they can look at. You know. Exactly. You're talking about a fan base that's been through a team. They they were fans of a team that that made it to four consecutive Super Bowls and didn't win a single one. Like, that's and you're in Buffalo, New York. Like, no, th- th- those those fans need something, man. Those fans, <laughs> I'm I'm with you. I'm with you. Show them show them a little bit of love. You know? <laughs> I'm with you on that one. So, <laughs> oh man, that's that's a that's a great way to cap off this video. So uh, this is not something that we usually do on this channel, but maybe it's something we'll do more. I've I've really enjoyed uh, doing this particular video. And if you've got any hot takes of your own. Please let us know in the comments. No, no, no take is too controversial right now, um, <laughs> as you can see based on the six that we've just had. So, so please let us know in the comments what your controversial predictions are for the NFL playoffs, and uh, enjoy with us as the festivities begin tomorrow and run all weekend. Six playoff games in a weekend, three per day. First time ever in the NFL. It's going to be absolutely awesome. So uh, let us know your hot takes. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe. We appreciate you.